I, we are live on YouTube. Somebody uh, link my YouTube in the chat. Perfect. I'm going to do my words of wisdom now. Today we're talking about how to invent your way out. Uh, invent, invert your way to getting what you want. We're going to talk about the seven habits of highly unsuccessful people and the tardy tree sloth. Uh, so this will be hopefully life-changing uh, just like every other words of wisdom. So, seven habits of highly un unsuccessful people, the tardy tree sloth, and <laughs> how to invert your problems to get what you want. Um, reverse engineer. Abraham Lincoln said, I've learned from every person I've met. So Abraham Lincoln said, I've learned from every single person I've ever met. Just most of the time, it's what not to do or what not to be. This is something I live by. This is why I'm comfortable talking to absolute idiots. I'm okay competing against idiots, right? Because you can learn from anybody. Every person you meet, you can learn from. Just most of the time, it's what not to do or what not to be. So, whether that be, but I would say only listen to the top 1%. You cannot be democratic with what you decide to do and what you decide to be. And too many people are democratic these days. All right, now that we've got more people in. Sherlock Holmes. Sometimes when you, when you remove everything that cannot be true, you're left with what is true. I love, I love Sherlock Holmes quotes. They're like the best. Most people spend their life never really knowing what they're meant to do. Everybody passes time, but very few people genuinely live. The solution is to get better at reading the signs and the hints. Don't end up in analysis paralysis. We talked uh, a few days ago about the two types of people. The people that are sloppy but fast and they dive into things. Maybe without having 40% of the context of like what they're trying to do. And then there's the people that have analysis paralysis. And those are the engineering type people that want to get a complete picture before even starting a project. And they might be stuck not doing something for 10 years because they don't have a complete picture. Um, but they do things right. It just takes a lot more time and they're not very efficient. So the rule I say is between, no between 40 and 70% of what you're trying to do before starting. Don't have more than 70, don't have less than 40. So that's my rule. Um, so the people that have end up in analysis paralysis, but also don't jump into things with research. Instead, just invert the question. A lot of times that's the easiest way to get to a solution. We talked yesterday about meditation. Um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Yeah, slow and steady wins the race, right? Aesop's fables, we talked about that yesterday. Um, a lot of the time we talk, we talked about meditation yesterday and getting to a solution. One of the simple things you can do in meditation is and your mind just will automatically do this when you take your stuff away from the front part of your brain and you start thinking the back part of your brain. And that's what removing all the stimulation does. It allows you to think more deeply. Um, but one of the things your brain will naturally do when you're in that state is invert questions. When you're questioning why, then you start questioning the opposite of your bias which builds stronger, more founded opinions. So instead, just invert the question. How to be an optimal weight? Well, what is going to make you gain weight? Right? If you're trying to lose weight and you're like, how do I get to the optimal weight? Well, what things are going to make you gain weight? Maybe watching too much TV. Maybe eating that Twinkie, <laughs> maybe going to Safeway and buying some cake, um, owning some ice cream. The human body is so interesting because 
it's been proven that like we love sugar, salt, and fat. And if we have those three ingredients in our kitchen in surplus, we're going to eat them because we are wired to want those things. So when you have those cravings, you have to just own the things that you're allowed to eat and you'll be more likely to eat those things. Of course, you could still go out and get them, but you'll be more likely to eat them if they're the only things in your kitchen. Uh, the only versions of sugar, salt, and fat you have are the ones that you would, in your logical state of mind, eat. <laughs> Moderation is okay. Yeah, I like the um, agnostic diet where everything is okay. Some things are not as okay as others. So there's like a tier level of, of foods that I, I live by. And I just try to eat less and less and less of the lower level tiers. But I can talk about that more, Sally, later on. All right, let's figure out where we are out uh, at how to be an optimal weight. Well, reverse the question. Ask yourself, well, what is going to make me gain weight? The th two things that make people unsuccessful. One, sloth. Two, unreliability. If I were an employer, these are the two things I would avoid like the plague in finding employees. <clears throat> so you have to invert all of your problems when it comes to health, wealth, love, and happiness. The key to relationships is trust and communication. Communication is, is the most important for me. It's also probably a thing I struggle with the most because it requires an emotional connection to want to put the effort in, to be, to care enough to put the effort in to communicate properly. You can build trust over time, which also is a level that I understand about myself because quality time is my love language, but communication is the hardest because I can dedicate some time to spending with somebody and maybe be a great communicator at that time when I'm with that person, but when I'm separated, it's hard. So if you want to ruin a relationship, do something shady. It's the easiest way to ruin a relationship. Being in love is the hardest, let alone finding it. I think finding love is, is not as difficult as people think it is. You can love most people. <laughs> Happiness. Mother Teresa said that the reason most people are unhappy is because they are focused on their own happiness. That kind of goes along the lines of the thing I say that says, um, if you want to get what you want out of life, you have to give other people what they want and in turn, you'll just find it. Like if I ask myself, what will not give me happiness? One of the things that is an absolute necessity for me is a ton of sleep. Whereas Julie <laughs> doesn't need very much sleep. Speaking of. <laughs> um, so I absolutely like have to have a ton of sleep every night or else I just don't function. Um, same thing goes with like protein, like everybody's different. Um, invert to find out the ingredients that you need in life. Um, you need to figure out how many hours you need to be putting in a day into business and money-making activities, love, um, I know what I need in terms of love, right? Um, and happiness. You got to help other people. I I think spending time with children, like I don't know if it's because like I'm a very feminine woman, but spending time with children makes me really happy. If you believe in God, spending time with God or a spiritual thing. Uh, quiet time, if you really need quiet time. Um, being in a peaceful state, listening to an audiobook, all great things. Fake. No, I'm not saying we rely on fake.
<laughs> All right. Well, those are the words of wisdom for today. I will um, share my next words of wisdom tomorrow. Or not tomorrow, sorry, Monday morning. And we're going to talk about floating across the Pacific Ocean in a raft, which is 